Welcome to the Basics of Biofilters, a presentation from the University of Minnesota. Biofilters are an effective air cleaning technology that's been in use for decades to clean exhaust from wastewater treatment plants and a variety of other manufacturing operations. The technology has been brought to the farm over the past 10 to 15 years to become one of the most successful and cost-effective means of cleaning air from livestock buildings. Here we'll explain how they work with specific design considerations for livestock confinement operations including options for different barn types. We'll also look at biofilter management to help keep them working effectively over time. Design and management are key to their robust effectiveness. Done properly, research shows biofilters on power ventilated livestock and poultry facilities can reduce odor and hydrogen sulfide emissions up to 95 percent and reduce up to 80 percent of ammonia emissions. No one would consider a picnic in the shadow of a 780 head swine gestation barn, but everyone enjoying lunch in this photo smelled nothing but fresh air and potato salad, an excellent illustration of how effective biofilters can be. Biofilters for manufacturing operations are expensive. While much cheaper for livestock facilities, the cost of installation will run between $250 and $350 for every thousand cubic feet of air to be treated. A typical swine finishing barn is designed to vent about 100 cubic feet of air per minute for each pig. To treat all outgoing air from such a barn, add $25 to $35 per pig space to the overall construction cost. Once in place, proper biofilter operation and maintenance will require some additional expense. Despite the financial investment, what actually treats the odorous air doesn't cost a thing. Unlike a simple air filter, a biofilter uses millions of varied microbes already present in the natural environment. The appropriate media and level of moisture creates a biological banquet where hungry microorganisms feast on organic and inorganic compounds in the barn's exhaust. These gases are digested and released as water, carbon dioxide, some salts, and even more hungry microbes. A typical open face biofilter installed on a manure pit exhaust fan pushes air out through a duct and plenum before it meets the biofilter media. The plenum is an empty space that runs the length and width of the biofilter, allowing for even distribution of exhausted air. Here's an example of a working open face biofilter on a swine nursery. Note how all exhaust fans pictured share the same duct upstream of the biofilter. Another working biofilter design shows the minimum vent fans connected with their own ducts to a shared plenum and media. There are two distinct components in biofiltration design, airflow distribution and biofilter media. The media is where microbes attach and go to work. It provides a source of carbon crucial to the microbes diet. Media also holds water critical to microbial survival. It must also be porous enough to allow airflow. Media in early biofilter designs was an organic combination of wood chips and basic compost, with wood chips making up the majority of the mix. While still effective for treatment, the smaller compost particles settle among the larger wood chips. This restricts airflow and requires more powerful and expensive exhaust fans to push air all the way through. Recent research shows a media of nothing but wood chips greatly improves airflow without compromising air treatment. Ongoing research with other media sources even includes testing inorganic material. Proper airflow through the media is very critical to a functioning biofilter. For this, 70 to 80 percent of the media volume needs to be empty space. Called void space, there's an easy way to test on site how much to expect in the chosen media. Take two five gallon buckets and fill one to the rim with water. Firmly pack full the other to the rim with test media. Pour as much water needed to cover the media to the top. Then measure how many inches of water it took to do so. This amount reveals the percent of void space in the media. 
The speed of airflow through the media's void space is also important. The longer it takes, the more time microbes have to do their work. Higher concentrations of pollutants require more contact time, and thus more media. While researchers are working to shorten necessary contact times, currently three to five seconds is enough for most livestock facilities. Contact time and airflow speed through the media help designers size the biofilter footprint, or how much area will be needed outside the barn. Since more media equals more treatment, the footprint can be adjusted, provided the necessary media volume is present. As media depth increases, the footprint gets smaller. But deeper media requires more powerful exhaust fans, which cost more to install and operate. Typical ventilation fans limit the media depth to around 18 inches. For example, an 18-inch depth and 3-second contact time will require a footprint of about 30 square feet for every 1,000 cubic feet of air to be treated per minute. It goes without saying that biofilters help those outside the barn breathe easier. At the same time, air quality inside is also important to the health of resident livestock. Thus, proper airflow distribution must factor into any power ventilated barn. Exhaust fans must be able to create negative pressure or a vacuum in the barn that's strong enough to pull in ambient air from outdoors and push indoor air all the way through the biofilter and back outside. The type, size, and number of fans for any particular barn depend on the type, size, and number of animals housed inside. Weather also plays a role. This chart shows the minimum airflow needed for various stages of swine production in cold weather. Hot weather needs are often 10 or more times the airflow rates shown here. Adding a biofilter to an exhaust fan can hinder the fan's ability to properly ventilate the barn. Careful duct and plenum design can minimize such trouble if they're built large enough to keep air speeds below 1000 CFM. Lower air speeds in these areas mean less impact on the barn's airflow. Equations developed specifically to determine a biofilter's impact on airflow help avoid ventilation problems. As pressure against the fan increases, airflow will decrease. Media void space and depth are the primary factors creating these pressures on the fan. This graph shows how four different fans perform against rising pressure needs with static pressure increasing left to right across the bottom and airflow rate rising from bottom to top. Now that we've explored the root considerations of biofilter design, let's see how these basics are applied in the field. Provided designs are based on pressure and airflow parameters outlined in the University of Minnesota Biofilter Design Guide, a variety of materials will work. Here, plywood and pallets will become the ducts and plenum. Other plenum and ducting installations have been done with concrete blocks and wire mesh. Here, concrete blocks support porous plastic flooring beneath the media. This shows a deeper biofilter installed on an exhaust fan from a manure reception pit. A concrete stem wall was formed on two sides to hold the media while a removable wood wall gives access for maintenance, such as replacement of media. With that in mind, the manner of media placement matters. If the media is a combination of materials, mixing must take place before it's carefully placed on the plenum. It is important to avoid any compaction of the media during placement. Compaction reduces void space and restricts airflow. One of the most difficult but utterly critical biofilter management issues is control of moisture levels in the media. Without enough moisture, the microbes die off and the biofilter stops working. Lawn sprinklers on automatic timers can help maintain needed moisture levels when outdoor temperatures remain above freezing around the clock. Through trial and error, timers can be set to fire up the sprinklers with a duration and frequency 
that maintains the recommended 30 to 60 percent moisture content in the top three quarters of the media. In winter months, moisture content is maintained from a high relative moisture content in the building exhaust air and snowmelt. Other biofilter maintenance besides the critical moisture level includes weed and rodent control. Common herbicides can control weeds and standard rodent control practices in use at most farms will control mice and rats who dare to take residence in the biofilter. Over time the media breaks down, becoming less porous and causing a decrease in fan performance. This is when the media needs to be replaced, or about every three to five years, based on the type of media used. Like compost, used media can be land applied to cropland. Now we'll answer a couple frequently asked questions on biofilters. First, can they be installed effectively on curtain side or naturally ventilated barns? The answer is yes and no. Air must be pushed or pulled through a biofilter by a fan. For a curtain side barn with no fans, a biofilter won't work. Since many naturally ventilated barns have some minimum fan capacity, often used to vent gases from an underfloor manure storage area, biofilters can be installed on such fans and will treat the exhaust air. During winter months, this is 100% of the vented air. However, in hot weather, less than 10% of odorous air exits the pits leaving more than 90% of the barn's odor emissions untreated. Another popular question is if there's a need to upgrade all the barn's fans if a biofilter is added to an existing barn. The answer is maybe. If enough area outside the barn is available to allow for a large footprint and shallow, newer media with plenty of pore space, the existing fans may work just fine. If this isn't possible, then new fans may need to be installed to handle the increased pressure load. On new barns, airflow requirements should be factored in fans purchased that will work with the biofilter. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation and can walk away with a better understanding of biofilters. They're a proven method for reducing odors and gases released into the neighborhood. Biofilters remain one of the lowest cost air cleaning solutions available despite the need for some maintenance to keep the air flowing and the microbes healthy enough to do their job. Proper design and maintenance are key to having an effective odor control system for years to come. For more information online, point your browser to www.manure.umn.edu and click on Air Quality. Thank you for your interest in biofiltration.